In this tutorial, you will learn about the basics of shadow and how they affect your projects. If you haven't watched the intro to lighting system, please watch that tutorial first. But if you have watched that tutorial, then let's go ahead and get started. To do so, make sure you have stage and light selected. Then on the modify panel, make sure that you have this box for shadow selected. Currently I'm using light 01, which is a directional light. To get to the shadow settings, we can either scroll all the way down to the bottom of the modify panel, or we can just jump there using the section menu. Here are the shadow settings. By default, our directional light uses By default, our directional light uses drop shadow. And as you can see, there's the shadow right here on our virtual terrain. If I change the opacity for drop shadow, you can see it gets a little darker. And I can lower it to make it fade out a little more. But I'll just keep it around 50. Next, let's take a look at threshold. Threshold is about how detailed the shadow map will be. Notice now currently it's set at 20. I'm just going to zoom in a little closer so we can see around this area. If I increase threshold to say the number of 99, the highest setting, you can see that there is more detail in the shadow. Just around here in the shoulder and neck area, you can actually see a little bit of the hair as well. But if I lower the threshold, say down to zero, you'll see that the shadow for the hair, shoulder and neck have all blended together, forming this one massive shadow. So you can play around with threshold to have more details for your shadow. Next, let's take a look at wall shadow. You don't see an immediate effect. It is best if you set the offset maybe to 30 for X and 30 for Y, and now you can see the shadow for the wall shadow. But notice as I move around my character, the shadow will always remain behind her. That is because wall shadows will only form on a virtual background or a 2D background. For instance, if I change my background by going to stage, 2D background, then load in a cloud, you can see it's still there. But say if I had a prop behind my character, move that prop slowly behind my character, you'll see that the wall shadow slowly disappears, but it doesn't appear a shadow on the actual prop. But if you take a look at the prop, you'll notice that it has a wall shadow on the virtual background. And if you look at her feet, she still has her shadow, but it's only for the virtual terrain and virtual background. Next, let's take a look at self-cast shadow. But to do so, I'm going to take a look at my other character. So let's go ahead and home in on him. Here's my character, and as you can see, he's standing in a room with a door on it. Let's go ahead and go back to stage, then to light, and then for our shadow type, let's change it to self-cast shadow. As you can see with self-cast shadow, shadows from our avatars as well as other props will be casted and you can see those shadows on other props. So you can see that on the floor prop and the wall prop, you can see the shadow of our character. Plus you can see the light is coming in through the door and you can see the shadow being created here and the light for the door on the wall and the floor. Self-cast shadow can also create shadows for parts of the body as well as for accessories that are on your character. Now with self-cast shadow, you can also change the opacity and the threshold, but one of the things that you can change that you couldn't change with drop shadow is blur. And by using blur, you can add a little bit of realism to your shadows. Depending on your project needs, you can increase the blur level or decrease, depending on the type of light you want to use or create in your scene. Also with self-cast shadow, you can change the resolution to a higher setting and you'll see that now the shadow has more of a crisp edge and is more realistic. However, using a high resolution for shadow is taxing on your computer, so I recommend a little caution whenever you're creating large scale projects with high resolution for shadows. Next is shadow range. Notice that the shadow range is set at 100. If I slowly decrease, you'll notice that the shadow will slowly begin to fall off. Since with our current setting, where he's just inside a room, you probably want to set the shadow range to 100. But if you were in a larger terrain setting, say a desert, in this example you can see my character standing here in the desert, and you can see a shadow here. Now for the basis of the scene, that the action will take place around my character. But as you can see, there's an architectural piece in the background, and there's a little bit of shadow here and here on the ground. But since I'm using a high resolution for shadow, and I don't want to tax too much on my computer, I can use the shadow range to lower the setting. 
And as I lower it, you will notice that the shadow for the architectural piece will be removed. That way I can save on resources for my computer and take out shadows that are not necessarily needed for the project's needs. The last thing I want to show you is bias. With certain extreme light angles, you can cause shadows to look incorrect. Bias will help correct those shadows. For example, if I've moved my light around, you can see the shadow moving across the ground, but you can also see the shadow on the body. If I don't want the light to be here on the arms, I can use the bias to decrease and you'll see that the shadow begins to be removed from the arms and the leg areas here on the front. But if you move too much of the bias, you'll start to see that the shadow itself begins to disappear. So you have to play around with the settings to make sure you get the settings just right. And that's the basics for shadows, so good luck and have fun with your productions.